Investors should be cautious about any and all stock recommendations and should consider the source of any advice on stock selection. Nothing in this broadcast is an offer to buy or sell any financial instrument, including but not exclusive to stocks, options, etc. This show is for entertainment purposes only. All investors are advised to conduct their own independent research into individual stocks before making a person's decision. In addition, investors are advised that past stock performance is no guarantee of future price appreciation. Welcome to the big show. It's the Financial Reboot Market Wrap, 1130. We're putting November in the books, and what a month it was. Huh? So unless you were living up under a cave today, you know that Dow went over 24,000, and it closed above 24,000. So it took exactly 30 trading days from 23,000 to get to 24,000. That is an incredible rise. It's also a very bullish rise. Uh, all you old time traders, all you long, long on two traders know that uh, the way transports led today was very bullish. Uh, there's some good underpinnings in this market. It's a very strong market. It doesn't look like um, the end of the bull is anywhere near. So we'll see though, we'll see. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go into the show. Um, let's talk about Bitcoin first, because Bitcoin was really fun today. Um, there's a seven-day chart of Bitcoin, and you can see seven days ago, we were at 8,000, and uh, uh, one day ago, we were at 11,000. Now we're back down at 9,000, about 98, 27 as of this recording. So, you know, it's been fluctuating in that $9,000 range, um, pretty much bouncing from 9,000, maybe about 9,200 up to 9,000, 10,000. And so it's been a really weird rise, but you know, you can see, um, and we were talking about this, the last few shows, we were telling people, once you hit that 10,000, start looking to take a little profits, take some money off the table. If you've doubled your money, at least sell half, and then that way the rest is you're playing with house money. And the reason was because it, over the last year, there's been so much talk about 10,000 that everybody has this number in their head. And already 10,000 is a nice round number, so it's very psychological with traders, uh, whether we want to admit it or not. Uh, but we were, we, were, we were saying, once it gets over that 10,000, get very leery. It's going to get very volatile and it's going to get very weird because there's going to be people that are going to pull the trigger and sell. Uh, and you can see that right after you got up to 11,000, uh, went right back down to 92 and then it, it's kind of been basing sideways. It looked like it was starting a downtrend there, but it looked like, uh, looks like the last couple of hours have broken that downtrend. Possibly we'll see, uh, whether this is going to be another move back up or whether it's going to lead to some sideways trading is another thing. Now with Bitcoin, um, some interesting developments that I didn't see on Twitter or the stock message boards. And I was talking to the trade team about this, that it's kind of weird. Coinbase today, the the government says uh, they have to turn over the trading records for, I think it was 15,000 uh, traders, and they need to turn it over to the IRS. So, you know, that kind of takes away an aspect that's that's very popular about Bitcoin, and that's the anonymous a access or aspect. And and sorry, it was really a busy day today. I mean, my I'm losing my voice. It was so exciting today. Um, so excuse me on the raspiness. But, you know, it, it's now there's some that's a little form of regulation. But what it does is it takes away that anonymous aspect. And, you know, that's one of the benefits of Bitcoin, right? You, nobody knows whose transaction it is. It's just numbers, right? It's just digital. Um, there's no real identification to it. Everybody's just a number, right? Um, and the number is like your wallet's number. It's not like your social security number and stuff. You start taking that away. A lot of factors come in, right? Uh, one, uh, I think the, the order today for Coinbase was all trades over $20,000. Now you, everybody knows with the banking regulations in America, uh, generally any transaction over $10,000 has to be reported. Um, with this one, they went a little higher 20,000, but I mean, with one coin is 10,000. So that probably includes a lot of traders. But, you know, it takes away that anonymous aspect. And so you, that's part of the allure of Bitcoin. Now, this article we saw also, too, plays into that because uh, we were reading about an Eastern European company. And what they're doing is they're starting to take Bitcoin payments and they're doing it so they can circumvent sanctions against countries. 
Now, this means this could be a pipeline to sell God knows what to North Korea, Syria, whatever, any kind of terrorist uh, uh, regimes and things like that, anti-American sentiment. So there's a nefarious side to this. Um, so always be aware of that. And I say that because there's so many millennials involved in it. And please don't take this the wrong way. But there's so many millennials, and the millennials really are a generation that are all about the the righteousness of things, right? You know, the way we treat people, the way we uh, gender identification, you know, things like that. It's really, really uh, GMOs, everything, save the planet, um, do the right thing, right? I mean, if you're trading Bitcoin, are you supporting terrorism? Are you supporting countries that are circumventing sanctions that are meant to denuclearize a country like North Korea? Ask yourself that. Okay? All right. There you go. That's your preaching for the day. So Bitcoin, you know, uh, since we've been talking, it's kind of just floated around at 9,800. Um, it's kind of bounced back up and down. But we just, very simple charting here. Very basic, very simple charting. Just right off the tops. Um, you see you had an uptrend here and it broke that uptrend and then it set another a downtrend here. But it looks like this bar might take us out. It might either take us sideways or it might take us higher. We'll see. Or it could fail. Um, but just be very careful with Bitcoin. Like we, like we said, we've been advising everybody that's in it. If you're at 100% gain, sell half, play with house money. Easiest way to do it. No one ever lost money taking profits. Okay. So Dow Jones. Uh, 2,400, man. It took us 30 trading days to go from 23,000 to 24,000. Wow. That's incredible. We purposely put up a one-year chart because we want you to see. When Donald Trump took over the presidency at the beginning of the year, well, actually at the end of the last year, but officially in the beginning of this year, uh, we were under 20,000. We are at now at 24,000. To put this into perspective, okay? To put this into perspe perspective. Let's look at a three-year chart. Look how long the Dow, it spent years. Let's go to a 10-year chart, okay? Let's get the whole Obama uh, years in there. Uh, this will go back to 2008. Look at how long it stayed in that range and in just 30 days. One year, one year to go up. From 10,000 or, uh, yeah, one year to go, let's show you again. It took us one year to go from 20,000 to 24,000. Wow. Good job, President Trump. Now, you guys are probably wondering, you know, we've got a few trades on the board. And, you know, the free picks, we always let you know what we're trading in case you want to play along and stuff. You know, you guys know we're short retail. Well, we debated today whether to break off that trade because we had the big gap up let's go with a one day chart you know we had that big gap up but we decided not to because we started to see some big volume bars coming in here and it turned out we were right so what we ended up doing was adding to the trade we averaged down a little bit but we're just in the uh like we told you before we're in those 37 dollar puts uh that expire in the middle of january uh so we're still live on this trade. We're still short retail, XRT. Uh, this is an S&P 500 chart. Uh, you can see what a seven-day period. So we were at 2,600 seven days ago. We are now at 2,647, man, all-time highs. We are short the S&P, and we added another position today. If you guys are wondering, we're short at 257. Those puts expire in January, and we added some 259s that expire in the middle of December. We think we're seeing some chinks in the armor, and we need a good retrace. We do need a good rinse after this big run-up. Um, the news cycle today, just not a whole lot to talk about. Oh, here's another trade that we've been talking about. You know, we, you know, guys know we were long on oil. Um, and yesterday we were talking about it because oil had a bad day yesterday. Uh, we were talking about, we were thinking about cutting out on that trade, but we didn't um, because of the OPEC meeting today. Well, we got what we wanted out of the OPEC meeting today. They decided to uh, extend the, the cuts uh, through the end of uh, next year, 2018. So, you know, oil got a nice little boost. We're in those $25 calls and OIH traded um, 
in the high 24s today. So that's a nice striking distance. So that's oil. Oil had a good day today. Uh, the Dow ended up 331 points, a percentage and a half. S&P 500 almost a percentage up the NASDAQ, a percentage too. Remember that big ugly day that NASDAQ had yesterday? It was crazy. Now here's another thing to be concerned about. We've talked about this before, right? This bull market. It's been about... I think I read an article one time on CNN, uh, CNBC, and uh, it was saying that of this bull market, like 70% of it's FANG stocks. If you look at the FANG stocks today, uh, Facebook was down most of the day. I think it turned green at the end of the day, but uh, Amazon was down, Google was down, Apple was down, right? So where's the lead it seems like there was money rotating from tech back into traditional stocks probably a lot rolling back into banks because uh as this economy blows up don't forget we had the gdp number they revised last month to 3.3 percent oh my god man they, they, trump just has this economy on fire right now if he gets this tax reform look out um but we still think there's going to be a nice rinse before uh, uh the team's laughing at me uh, they've laughed at me before and regretted this. So <laughs> don't make me put on my Superman cup. But anyways, so, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it, we think it's, you know, it's still a very strong bull market. Let me, let me put this in simple terms. It's still a very strong bull market right now, but nothing goes straight up. Well, Bitcoin goes straight up, but uh, <laughs> we're not playing that. Um, but, you know, it goes like this. So we think it's made a high. Now it's going to retrace in a minute. And that's all we're going to do is try to capitalize on that little retrace here that we feel is about to happen. Another reason that made us believe that uh, uh, um, there was, sorry, some breaking news. Parliamentarian says revenue trigger and GP, GOP tax plan will not work under rules of Senate, whatever. Okay, they're going to they, they're gonna get those 50 votes. So all the rest of this is rhetoric right now. But one thing that happened today was, if you look at it, right, the Dow up 1%, over 1%, the S&P up almost 1%, the NASDAQ up three quarters of a percent, the Russell was up, the VIX was up too, almost 6%. You know, remember yesterday we were talking about signals aren't jiving. So something something's brewing inside the market. And what we think it is, and we'll say it again, what we think it is, is the Trump trade. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news, right? The tax reform. The rumor is they can pass it, they can pass it, they can pass it, right? The news is they actually got the 50 votes and they passed it. Well, we're at that news part. Uh, they're either going to get, look, they're either going to get the 50 votes and the market's going to blow up. They're going to get the 50 votes and they're gonna, there's going to be a sell on the news, right? Or they're not going to get the 50 votes and all these shorts are going to look like gold. Because if they don't get this tax reform passed, there's going to be hell to pay. You know, in the news cycle today, there was just wasn't a whole lot going on. One of the articles that caught our eye was Randy Zuckerberg, um, Mark Zuckerberg of um, of Facebook. Facebook. Uh, his sister, man, was reported sexual harassment on an Alaskan Airlines plane. And if you guys get a chance to go read the article, she wrote a long letter to Alaska Airlines. And, you know, give them credit. They actually... Uh, responded and they're addressing it but you know you just scroll down it's just really not much in the news cycle today you know it's just all about tax reform and it's all about bitcoin bitcoin all the articles you're seeing guess what you know if you see 10 articles five say it's a bubble five say you should be buying hand over fist so you know like we said if you're up the 100 percent, sell half play with the house money um if you bought at that top you know, be patient because there's a good chance it will come back. Um, it has every time up until now. So always believe a trend until the trend proves you wrong. Um, and the trend with Bitcoin is just like with the markets, buy the dip. Um, that as long as that works, you, keep, you stick with it. And it's been the same with Bitcoin, right? I, I don't care if this thing goes on a thousand dollars in a day. It still recovers and it goes up even higher. So look. You guys have a great Thursday, okay? It was a really, really fun market day. I mean, I've almost lost my voice. Um, but it's really a fun market day. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, irritating news today. It was a lot of, a lot of good news today. Where uh, 
it wasn't it wasn't a normal Republican versus the Democrats as far as we could see. I, big focus on the markets, big focus on what's going on uh, economically and stuff, which is the way it should be. Okay, now, the news shouldn't be an opinion show. The news should be just uh, straight facts. Anyway, so there's your rant. Um, you guys have a great Thursday, man. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii. Well, it's getting a little cloudy now. It's winter season. Um, but you guys have a great day from Kalihi. Uh, you guys have an awesome Thursday night. There's football tonight. So if you guys want to, the Cowboys limping along trying to get into the playoffs. Another team, the NFL in all its infinite wisdom already has lost, what, two major quarterbacks, star power, a bunch of other stuff, the national anthem protests, ratings and the thing. And they go and suspend Ezekiel Elliott for six games. Um, not that what he did wasn't wrong, but they, they probably could have been a little smarter about this, um, the NFL right now. So you got two limp, you know what, uh, fighting it out this evening on TV. It probably won't be much of a game, but, uh, you know, it's football. Anyways, guys, better you go out and do some yoga or something like that, right? All right. So you guys have a great Thursday afternoon. We'll see you again tomorrow for the week wrap up. Um, if you're in Bitcoin, congratulations again. You know, I know there's a little pullback, but uh, just hang in there. Uh, take profits. Nobody ever lost money taking profits. Okay. Uh, if you're into the stocks and stuff, man, and you're long, congratulations. It was a great market day today. Uh, just across the board, it was a great day. So you guys have a great Thursday evening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. This is the Financial Reboot Investment Team wishing you aloha.